everyone. I am so excited because I um, am going to be doing this story about this woman named Susan Schofield. And I'm going to write an article, I promise. I just want to reach out to, I'm going to see if I can get in touch with Susan's um, husband's daughter as well as Michael. And I might try to see if I can talk to Susan because I feel like, you know, if I really want to do the story justice, maybe her crazy train should be a part of the story. Um, but you guys know that like my main point of focus is always to be for the children. And I really do think these children are being abused by Susan. Absolutely. It's because I think Susan has what's called Munchausen by proxy. So this afternoon, I had a little bit of time because my son um, was really into hanging out in his room by himself, which was a nice escape. I don't really get that much break from him. So um, now Susan is crazy, like straight crazy. So you guys know that I cover these Munchausen by proxy moms. And here's the thing with um, Munchausen by proxy. These women have a lot of time on their hands to research and they surround themselves with people that are well-informed and understand the mental health world, um, that understand the legal world. So she knows exactly what she can do. And as long as a doctor is prescribing these medications for her kid, she's literally not abusing them, even if they're completely like whacked out of their mind and can't speak. Um, and I'm sure part of the reason that she's keeping her kids so drugged up is so that they look sicker than they are. Um, and look more mentally unwell than they actually are. Um, to be honest, like the mainstream media will do like a story on a munchie mom and then they're like moving on. But in this case, I will like write about Susan as many times as I need to. Um, I'm looking for people to come forward so I can put together a piece that um, does justice for Bodhi and for Danny because really at the end of the day, it's about the kids. And unless somebody like stands up for them, um, Susan will literally kill them. And if she doesn't kill them, she's going to fuck their brains up for the rest of their lives. And she will make them dependent and they will end up being 23 years old like Gypsy Rose was. The kind of crime that Gypsy committed is one of the most egregious crimes anyone could ever commit. The depth of the, um, the gore and the brutality of the crime that was committed against Dee Dee is one of the most egregious types of crimes that anyone can commit. So people that don't agree with that are not haters. And they just, they don't seem to get that. They truly think that if you don't see Gypsy as a victim and you don't view this homicide as justified, that you are a hater. Gypsy was not a victim the night that Dee Dee was unalived. Dee Dee was asleep. She had taken a sleeping pill. She was completely vulnerable. And there was absolutely no threat to Gypsy's life. Zero. Like, it was wrong for them to exploit this and profit off of what happened because Dee Dee is a victim. As much as you want to make her the bad guy, she's also a victim in this crime. Like, she was only 48 years old. If she were still alive today, she would be 57 years old. She was very young. She didn't have to be. You know, if, if something illegal had happened, it should have been handled in the court of law. It should not have been taken to that extent. And I think it's unfair to say that she got what she deserved. Um, because I don't think that... To be honest, like the mainstream media will do like a story on a munchie mom and then they're like moving on. Like, so Dee Dee Blanchard's case like just wrapped up, right? So Nicholas Godjune just got sentenced to life in prison for killing her, which P.S. is like super stupid. Like he shouldn't have gotten life in prison. Dee Dee deserved to die. I'm gonna block you for saying that Dee Dee got what she deserved because that's just not an unnecessary comment. I'm sorry, but... I don't discount that Gypsy was part, that her mom was very controlling and that her mom, I mean, even Dip, here's the thing, Dee Dee's siblings do not deny that Gypsy, that Dee Dee was controlling of her daughter, that Dee Dee was exaggerating and 
getting, taking advantage of people and using Gypsy as a pawn. Even her siblings don't deny that. So I think it's just like really disconcerting for the public to somehow be like, no, Gypsy wasn't a victim in some of this. But being a victim of child abuse doesn't excuse unaliving your mom. Um, kind of like if like one of Susan's kids like ended up killing her, like, can you really blame them? I'm not saying like go kill, murder Susan, but like that's how bad, that's the level of abuse these, ch these children go through. I know about that, but I don't at all um, discount that like Dee Dee did stuff to her daughter that was not necessary. I don't discount that Dee Dee was controlling, but I also know a lot of kids that have parents that are very terrible and they don't unalive them. Being hurt by a parent doesn't ever excuse unaliving someone. Thank you guys for your likes. Thank you guys for all of that. Your hearts, all of those things. Thank you so much. Thank you for helping get this video out. Okay. Let's talk about that. Yeah, keep giving me those likes. Thank you. And tapping and all of those things. Thank you so much. Okay. It says community fest. I don't even know what that means. Cool. I don't even, I don't believe in capital punishment. I'm not defensive of Didi. Why is it defensive? It's weird to me that like a victim that has been unalived saying that it's wrong for someone to be unalived is somehow being defensive of someone. Is that weird? Like, I didn't know that we lived in a society where we like we took justice into our own hands and we decided who gets to live and who gets to die. That's not the society that I want to live in. Even if I don't like someone and they've done bad things, I still don't want them to be unalived. Like... <laughs> at all like as much as i hate dd Dee Dee, it's almost like they're just as bad and at least Dee, Dee didn't drink and christy whose fault is it that rod had no relationship with those kids i'm pretty sure it was you that wanted all his fucking time and resources for your kids and made it impossible for rod to have a relationship with his kids christy is the consummate fucking narcissistic gaslighter that puts everything on dd Dee Dee when she's the one that stood in the way of that relationship Sorry, I had to get that off my chest because I have literally listened to her badmouth Dee Dee for years. And I've listened to that woman say Dee Dee deserved it so many times that it's disgusting. He shouldn't have gotten life in prison. Dee Dee deserved to die. Like, Christy, no. Nobody deserves to have their fucking neck decapitated. And if you think she deserved it, then you deserve that. And I hope when you go to bed, you're locking your door and you get what you deserve. Okay. TikTok was going to say that I wasn't being active. You guys, you need to like tap and give me all kinds of loves and like give me likes and all those things like because it was saying there was inactivity here. Um, they had a vendetta against Dee Dee and nobody else wanted her dead more than them. What other fucking parent would jump on a live and say it's justified for their daughter to fucking kill their parent? If that's the case, Dee Dee, Gypsy has a right to kill Rod under the same fucking circumstances. I would say abandonment and neglect would be just as bad. And Christy is a piece of fucking shit, too. Agree. So my thing about Becca Scoops is I liked, I watched her videos. Some of you guys asked me about that. Um, I watched Becca's videos. I, I was a little confused by Becca's fifth video, though. It really felt like in that video that I don't disagree that Gypsy manipulated Nick. And I also don't disagree that... Um, Nick wouldn't have done it if not for Gypsy, but it's not fair to say that Nick didn't say things to Gypsy that weren't kind. It's also not fair to say that Nick didn't play a dominant role in their role playing. It's also not fair to say that Nick didn't make comments to Gypsy that were also abusive. It like went both ways. They had a very toxic relationship that was like back and forth. Um, I believe that Gypsy was the mastermind, but to try to like take all of the accountability off the fact that Nick made the choice to do it, it's he's guilty too. He's guilty. They're both guilty. They're co-defendants. I think everyone wants to say that because Gypsy pursued him or whatever, that he's not guilty, but he's guilty. Like they're both guilty. Do I agree with his sentence? Not really. I didn't, I mean, I remember when he was sentenced, 
And I actually told Christy that I thought it was a horrible, I thought it was horribly like unjust, like I don't think he should be sentenced to life without a possibility for parole. And then she gets 10 years. I just, um, I, I felt the disparity in the sentences was a huge problem. Um, when it comes to what people think about Nick, I also have my own opinions. Like I'm not a Nick advocate. I'll never be a Nick advocate. Um, I think Nick, I think my issue between the disparities in their sentences is that Gypsy's not serving life. If we need anything, we would need Gypsy back in prison because she deserves to be serving a life sentence. He also got a sentence that was equal to what his crime was. This was premeditated and it was first degree and he knew right from wrong. I'm like, the way that they made me feel about Nick is not how I initially felt. Before contact with them, I had a lot of empathy for Nick. I felt wounded for him because he's a child. He was, a, a, I mean, a child, but he, you know, a 26-year-old young man with autism with an 82 IQ. I have a son with autism with a 74 IQ. I, I could see that's a vulnerable place. Yeah, because of my son. And, like, I also have gone through all of his appointments with him with neuropsychology and have understood that like at a certain point on the IQ spectrum, there's this gray area in IQ where they're not considered cognitively disabled. And so it would not be an intellectual disability, mm -hmm. but it's, it's also not, it's not at the average it's, and Nick is like at the cusp, yeah. right? My son is actually below average. He, Nick is at that cusp and, and they, and psychologists and neuropsychologists call that a gray area where they are some of the most vulnerable because they appear functioning enough, exactly. but, but they also need so much help mm -hmm. and Nick needed more help. And I, it just makes me sad that he ended up in that position. And it also makes me sad that like, before I met them, I was angry about the fact that he was not giving the same sentence as Gypsy, or if they there felt like there was such a severe disparity. It felt yeah, very they're... cruel too. It yeah, just yeah, felt yeah. Cruel. Huh? I'm sorry. It just felt very cruel. Do I think he's? Yeah. Do I think? No, he's... no. I think the whole the, the Nick. What happened to Nick was just cruel. yeah, a hundred percent. You know, it was not justice. It was, it was. It goes beyond not getting justice. It's like cruelty. It was cruel and unusual punishment. I feel like there was no understanding from the court about his disability and like, and they did, I don't think he was capable of taking the stand to be quite honest. No. And the way that Ken speaks and all of the fighting he was saying and all those talking points he had about like, it's a tornado and it's a volcano. That's their ta talking point. And that N Nick was the one that was the bad one, not gypsy. And right. like, those are their talking points. And when you hear that over and over and over and over again, and you, right and you want to be empathetic to someone that they're claiming is a massive victim, you, it they're almost, you. Yeah. huh? They're gaslighting you. Yeah. And then when you have empathy for people that have been abused, like I do, it's like they're preying on that. Right. Because then I don't want to question her victimhood. So Nick was never deemed incompetent to stand trial ever at no time during his, they have standards that they have to meet for um, the court and he was never deemed incompetent. And, he, and due to his autism, he was never deemed incapable of deliberating. So from a legal standpoint, he was never deemed incompetent and he was never deemed incapable of deliberating. So that's all I can say like from a legal standpoint, like. Are you a lawyer? No, I'm literally just answering questions and someone asked for my opinion. What's the problem? Why is Gypsy mad about the act? Because it makes her look really damn bad. Well, she murdered her mom. She well, I think they, they played up on Nick's autism and made him look way more innocent than he is. He well, is. she, I mean, he is absolutely de developmentally delayed and should not be in prison. Not as much as people think. Not as much as people think. That is really, the, the specialists have all contradicted themselves. When you read emails that he does, he is intelligent. But that he doesn't, you can be intelligent and autistic. 
Yeah, yeah, no, no, artistic, oh. absolutely. No, not the same, no. But no. he's not developmentally slow in any means, no. no. But autism is considered a developmental disability. It's called, considered a neuro neurological disability. No, it felt, affects all aspects of development. Um, he My was, son is autistic, so. He, okay, would your, do you believe that your son could be, be manipulated into murdering somebody? Yes. You do? Yes. Why? And how, and where is your son at on the, le on, on the, on the spectrum? He's high functioning. He's high functioning. Why do you think that that could because happen? Because they're vulnerable. Is that, you're, you're actually the first one that we've talked to that has said that. I think anyone that has autism can be manipulated because they're vulnerable. The discrepancies in Gypsy, oh, Gypsy's stories have changed so many times. It's impossible for me to really state, like, the discrepancies. Um, it's, it's the irony for me. I gotta go, you guys. I've been on live way too long. Thank you so much to all of you that have been on here and, like, shots fired. I, I gotta go. I'll be, I, I swear, just follow me here. I'm not trying to make money. I'll probably end this live. And you know what TikTok will tell me? That I made 32 cents. That's what TikTok will tell me. You made 32 cents. And then all you gypsy like supporters can be like, she monetized gypsy. And I'll be like, yeah, that 32 cents I made, I'm going to donate it to make a wish. Are you going to donate any of your money back to the make a wish foundation, Gyp? Gyp? All right, you guys, good night. Thanks for the 32 cents, everyone.